this is the first in a series on maps and locations. We're going to be looking at getting addresses from GPS locations, uh, getting coordinates from addresses, getting street views, getting map views, putting markers on maps. And we're going to first look, be looking at a lot of uh, shell and bash scripts to do this. And then we'll move on to uh, JavaScript and future tutorials for interactive maps. And today we're going to do something very basic. We're going to get a address. Uh, from GPS coordinates. Now in these tutorials I'm going to mostly be using Google Maps and their APIs. Um, so the scripts I write will be under an open source GPL license but it's going to be utilizing a service online um, and in some cases it will be just utilizing a service that you can get information from and other ones we might actually be using some a little bit of scripts from Google which may not be fully open. Um, but I find right now that this is, in my opinion, from what I've experienced uh, in mappings and locations, um, Google does the best job. So that's what I use for this sort of stuff. And in certain cases such as this where we're grabbing information, I see it as a service, not software. Although in, again, future tutorials, we're going to get into um, you know, utilizing some of their JavaScript APIs, in which case we'll actually will be using some of their codes. So. Um, up to you and your ethical, moral, and technical decisions. Um, so I just wanted to clarify that in this first tutorial here. So here we're going to be using Google's API to get information on a GPS uh, location. So uh, some of Google has a few different versions of their API and uh, some of them are very, very simple to use and we're going to be using them here with a script and we're going to be using, I'm going to be using wget uh, but you can use curl if you'd like. I usually default to wget because it's on pretty much all Linux systems. It's built into BusyBox. Um, where curl is might be a little more of an advanced program, but isn't as commonly installed by default, although pretty much always available. Um, so their API to get information on some on a location is very simple. You can ask for JSON format or XML format uh, and most of the time I prefer JSON, but actually in my script today I'm going to use some XML just to mix things up, but I'm going to show you both examples. So I'm going to say wget, I'm going to say dash o dash, uh, that's, that's um, an o not a zero, it's for output, that, the dash means standard output, which means it's going to display the content of a page to the, the, the shell rather than save it to a file. I'm going to do dash q to say quiet so don't show me the process because it should be rather quick. And then in quotations, I'm going to paste a link here. Boom. So we got HTTP maps, <clears throat> excuse me, google.com maps API geocode. And then here is where we specify whether we want XML or JSON. So first we're going to look at the JSON and then we can give it a latitude. And I put in one, just a random one from here in town and the longitude and then sensor false. Uh, I mean, we're not using a sensor. So, um, in fact, might, I don't know what the fault. Probably could get rid of that last little part. That's just what I have in my notes from a couple years ago. A lot of uh, these earlier scripts here that we're going to be going over are stuff that I have notes on that I did years ago and actually haven't played with too much since then. Let's go ahead and enter, and we should get some JSON output with a bunch of information on those GPS coordinates. Now, there'll be stuff in here. Uh, the You can get the... Um, you know the address. You can get just the number. You can get the name. You can get the 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 county. You can get the city, the state, um, and if it's a business, I think the business will show up in there. Uh, what we're going to look for today is just the full address, like so. Um, so that's the JSON output. Again, if I clear the screen and run the same command, I hit up arrow to bring up the last command and just say, change this to JSON. I can change this to XML. And I can go ahead and hit enter. And there we go. We get all the same information, but in XML format. Again, I personally prefer JSON. Uh, I think it's a little bit cleaner and easier to read in a lot of cases uh, and easier to pull stuff out of. But just for fun today, we're going to write a code using the XML. And again, we're going to be looking for the full address. Something like that, the formatted address. Now, if you run that same command, you can see that the tag for that is called formatted address. And I can say grep, and I can paste in formatted address. So we pipe that output into formatted address, and we should get lines that only have formatted address on them. And as you can see, there's a few of them. 
but the first one's going to be the one we want. So what I can do here is I can just say head dash n1, and that will give me just the first line that comes up with formatted address. Now we can remove the tags. There's different ways to do this, regular expressions, there's pro programs could probably do it. Uh, I could probably do HTML to uh, text. Uh, I'm just going to use cut just because I know it's a, uh, a command that will be installed on your system by default. So I'm going to run it through two cut commands. I can say cut dash um, delimiter of D and I'm sorry, delimiter of the greater than symbol. And I can say field two and then I can say cut dash D less than symbol field one. And there we go, we get an output of just the address, the full address, the mailing address there. So <clears throat> what we're gonna do here is, again, we've gave it GPS coordinates, the latitude and longitude here, we asked for XML output, and uh, then we took that output and we said grep, meaning look for, and we're gonna look for this tag, and we're gonna say, okay, head, start at the top, and dash n, the number of lines, just one, finding the first, um, response we get. And then we're going to say, okay, we're going to cut this. We're going to cut this line into columns. Well, what do we want to divide it up by? Well, first time we're going to divide it up by these greater than symbols. And we're going to say field two. So if this is our first delimiter, our first divider here, we're going to say, okay, field two, this will be field one over here, everything before that. This will be field two over here. Okay, so well, actually, this should be field two over here up to the next greater than symbol. So we have all that, but we still have the next portion of this little tag here. So that's what the second com cut command does. It says cut with a delimiter of the less than symbol here. And we're going to say field one. So everything before that, because you remember, well, let me show you here. Let me clear the screen, run that command again without the second cut, just to clarify. And you can see you get the output here. And it still has this here, so we want to get rid of that. And that's what the second cut command does. It says look at the less than symbol right here, and only look at stuff before that, which would give us this, our address. Let's go ahead and put that into a script. I'm going to use Vim as my text editor. You can use whatever text editor you would like. So let me go ahead and highlight this, and I've mentioned this before, a lot of you already know this, in a uh, Linux, and I think most Unix and Unix-based environments, once you highlight something, it's copied to your clipboard, and you can use center click to paste, which will probably be, uh, if you're using a regular mouse, your scroll button, if you just click it down, you can paste. So I've already highlighted it, so now I can paste it, I can say vim, and I'll call my text address.sh. Now I want this to be a bash script, so I'll give it the shebang line if bash really this isn't uh, I don't think we're doing anything here that's bash that it's you have to have bash for specific there we go um, this is all tools pretty much all external tools so this should work with any scripting language I'm going to use bash just because it's the fault on most systems but it might be better actually to do sh because most systems sh will default to bash or whatever your default shell is. So what I'm going to do here now is I'm going to paste in my command. Let's clean it up a little bit. First off, um, let's go ahead and let's create some variables. And I'm going to create a latitude and a longitude variable, I'll call them lat and long. But we want to not just create variables, we want the user to be able to give us the latitude and longitude. So if we're using arguments in bash in a shell script, dollar sign one will be the first argument, dollar sign two would be the second argument. So our user will have to give us the coordinates in that order. And that will be allow us to shorten this up a little bit as well. So we can say dollar sign lat. Really we could directly go dollar sign one, dollar sign two here. But just in case you're gonna use those, you're gonna make the script longer, it's better to take the arguments and put them into usable variables like so. Um, okay, so this line's kind of wrapping around, so what we're going to do is here we're going to say backslash and without any space we're going to hit enter, and then here I'll hit tab, and we'll do that after each, each pipe, just to clean things up a little bit. So it's still all one command, we're just breaking it down to different lines to make it easier to read is what we're doing there. Um, so then up here, so our script's pretty much done, um, but we'll want to check for some stuff, okay? Um, so right now, let's go ahead, save that, 
change mod plus X to make it executable. That's giving it permission to run. Now, if I just run it without giving any arguments, nothing, no, there's no output because we didn't give it any coordinates. So let me go ahead and give it the same coordinates we gave it before. I'll go ahead and paste in the coordinates. I got them in my notes here. And now we do that and we get the address output. And again, we could change one of these numbers and as long as it's an actual location, there we go, we got another address here. So whatever coordinates you put in here, I'll try putting something, if this ends up in the ocean, that's Cuba, okay. So we'll go back to this one here and we clear the screen. So it works, but if we don't give it any output or let's see what happens if we give it one coordinate, nothing happens because we're not giving it enough information. So let's go ahead and give our user a little bit of help here. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna add an if then statement. We'll say if, and we're gonna say pound, or we'll say in quotations, pound, uh, dollar sign pound. What's that saying? Okay, the dollar sign one says first argument. Dollar sign two means second argument. Well, dollar sign pound means the number of arguments. I've gone over this a long time ago in an earlier tutorial, but that's what it means, the number of arguments. And we're gonna say two, so, and dash LT means less than. So we're gonna say, if the user doesn't give at least two arguments, that's what we're saying here. If the, ar the user doesn't give at least two arguments, what are we gonna do? Well, then we're gonna give them some sort of output. So what we're gonna say is we're gonna say echo, we'll just say, We'll give it some sort of message like input, error, and I'll say echo, and we'll give them an example. We'll say example usage, and we'll say dollar sign zero now. Dollar sign zero, one is your first argument. Dollar sign zero is actually the name of your command. So they can rename this script whatever they want, and it will still display. Because if I was to say, oh, you know, do addresses like this, dot sh, address dot sh, well, the script might be renamed something else. And do we want to put the dot slash if it's installed to their system rather than just running it out of the script? It won't have that dot slash. But if we do dollar sign zero, it will show whatever the actual command they entered is as far as the name of the program. And we'll again, again give it some example coordinates here that I know will show an address. And then we'll say, exit one. So we'll end the script there. So we don't need to make it re-executable because it's still executable because it's still on our system. But if I run it without coordinates, it's going to give us our input error message and it's going to say uh, example usage and it will give us the command that we put in. And this, so they could just go, oh, let me try this out. I'm just put that in. Oh, that works. And if we do the same thing, but we only put one variable, we're still going to get that error uh, because we said check to see if they gave two arguments and they're only giving one. So there, that's how it works. And actually usually uh, when I do this, I usually also put in this. I usually say, uh, instead of example usage, I'll say usage and I'll say something like latitude and longitude. How do you spell longitude? Longitude, I think that's right. Close enough for right now. Um, so so th they might see without this, they'll go, oh, example usage, what are these numbers? Because they may not know what this program does and I haven't made a man file for it or have any other <laughs> comments in this script at all. Uh, so that's a good thing to have too. So now if they type it wrong, it will not only show them an example, but it will tell them what the usage actually is. And just to show you, see how this says dot slash address sh. So if I was to rename my address script to bob.sh, if I run it again with bob.sh, you can see that using that dollar sign zero uh, changes that message. So that's why we use dollar sign zero rather than putting the name of the program in there. Uh, and that is it for this tutorial. I want to point out a few things. Um, one, uh, all this, all the codes in this series is going to be on a GitHub uh, repository I created. If you go to github.com forward slash metalx1000, that's my username, click on repositories and then search for maps and locations. Right now it's at the top, it may or may not be. You can come up here and just type in map and it will narrow it down. You can click in here and all the scripts from this series will be in here. 
The bash ones will all be here. There's the address script right there. It's already there. I set this all up for you so you can just grab the code from there if you want. Um, and then just have a look at it to test it out. If your code is not working, you can see if mine does. So uh, I hope you found that useful. Again, all the code will be up online. I thank you for watching. Um, and I hope that you visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And as always, I hope that you have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.